Hi everyone, I am here today filming a 2023 reading raft video. I had a goal to read 23 books in 2023 and I surpassed that goal by 11 books, which is not like a big deal in like the book reading world, but for me, huge deal. So I read a total of 34 books in 2023, technically 33 because one of them was a reread so there's a there's a video already out there where I went through the first half of the year and what I read and now I'm gonna go through the second half which is a lot of books <laughs> lots of books first things first I'm not gonna go in chronological order like I did last time purely because I don't remember which books I read when um, I also have read a lot of series, so we're just gonna give you the basic gist of all of the books. And first and foremost, we're just gonna start off. We're just gonna start off. I read the Akatar series. I have, I have not read the fifth book, uh, A Court of Silver Flames, um, but I did read the first three which is a trilogy and then I read the little like novella and I love these love these I think my favorite of them is 1000% A Court of Wings and Ruin it is filled with so much romance so much uh, just really beautifully written scenes but it also is full of like politics, war, like it is really cool fight scenes. Anyways, I'm just in love. So this is definitely my favorite. But I will warn you, if you start the Sarah J Mass ness, if you begin, you will not be able to stop. She writes books that like are just fantastic. So if you're not familiar with this book or this series, I'll give you kind of a rundown of the first one. The first book follows Feyre, who is a human who lives in a world where there are high fey and they do not like humans. And some things go about and she's keeping her family safe, she's keeping her family fed, her family is like super poor, humans are really poor, like it's a whole, it's a whole thing. Either way, Feyre kills a wolf in the woods for her family to eat. Turns out that wolf was in fact a high fae who had shifted and so the high lord of the spring court, Tamlin, comes and says you can either die here or you will be taken in the deceased's place and you know I have to take you to Printhian, which I think is how you pronounce it. Either way, I'm really trying not to spoil anything, but it's fabulous. I read this in literally a day, and then I immediately read this, and this is fabulous. F amazing. And then once you're done with this, you're like, oh, and then you read this, and this is, again, my favorite. So, and then this is the perfect little morsel. I know lots of people don't like this. I think this is spectacular. I think it's wonderful. It's like a little tiny morsel of just calm, cute stories and I love it. So that's the Akatar series and once I read that my whole all my, my book club was like you're gonna want to read more Sarah J Mass stuff and they were correct. So we read the Throne of Glass series. Again I haven't finished this and it's really because after at a certain point I had read so many of her books that I was like I was I just needed a break so I read five of the seven there's technically eight but five of the seven books in the throne of glass series this is honestly it's really good this is definitely more tay it's less spicy per se it's definitely like this starts off at a YA level and then it gets a little spicier as you go in but it's not as spicy uh, romance wise as the Akatar series but this is so great it's got the same level of like magic political intrigue stuff 
but it's also got a really really powerful main character female main character um and she's so strong not that Feyre is not strong but you are just rooting for Selena in this and it's so fabulous and I would honestly reread these and it's got a really like there are twists in here that I was like oh, I did not even expect that so I love these I think if I were to choose one of them Empire of Storm is definitely like up there and like my favorites I love Air of Fire um but yeah so good and I'm excited to get back into this and finish the series because I know that Kingdom of Ash is supposed to be like heartbreaking <laughs> but it's supposed to be really good so this definitely recommend but I read all of these books <laughs> so that's already we got five there we got four there already nine books this is the inheritance games so as I said I read a lot of series um there is a fourth book in the series it is called the brothers hawthorne it just came out i have not read that yet but i have read the first three books the original trilogy if you will um the inheritance games is set in modern times it is not a fantasy book um which is actually great I thought when I looked at this cover I thought oh my gosh it's gonna be like fantasy it's gonna be kind of like light lark by Alex Astor it's gonna be like you know it's gonna be like that but it's not and I love it so it's set it tells the story of Avery Grahams who is just a normal 15 year old I think she's 15 but one day she's called out of school under very weird suspicious circumstances and told that she needs to go to the will reading of Tobias Hawthorne who is a billionaire and it is revealed that she has been given virtually his entire fortune over he has four grandkids they did not four grandsons he they did not get it he has two daughters they did not get the fortune she got it a supposed stranger and so the first book kind of tells the story of her dealing with this, her new fame, at, with like her newfound fortune, and also her kind of solving Tobias's last final riddle that he sets in place for her and for his grandsons. And so you read this, and then you read the second books, and they're just fabulous. So it's the Inheritance Games, which is amazing. Um, the Hawthorne Legacy also fabulous and then the final gambit and these are all great they were written by uh written by jennifer lynn barnes and i would 1000 percent recommend these they are very they are i would say they're kind of ya um but the the riddles are super cool the i was trying to guess things while i was reading them and i like left myself notes while i was reading it and it was a lot of fun to try to solve the riddles and solve the like puzzles that were left like alongside the um characters so really great books uh these were recommended to me by my friend stella who has a book instagram that i will put in the description below because she makes some great content um and i love her and i love all of her recommendations recommendations she definitely influences me when it comes to books um but i also some of my footage got corrupted or whatever it is just it's not available so i'm going to talk about the four books that that footage just got deleted and then it will go into the footage that i uh filmed yesterday describing all the books so let's get into it okay so we're gonna start off with these two novellas which i read in like the middle of the year and i'm really excited about them so i really want to talk about them um the first one is by veronica roth called arch conspirator and this is a post-apocalyptic retelling of the play Antigone um, in set in kind of like a dystopian sci-fi uh, world. It's really well written. Really well written. It's about 109 pages and it's so well written and it's like thrilling. It's like a gut punch of a story. It's so good. 
um and so if you're kind of trying to get into fantasy i would recommend fantasy or like sci-fi i would recommend reading this because it's super well written and it's just like a little morsel this is another novella that i read which is also a fantasy it's called tread of angels by rebecca roanhorse um and it is the story of celeste who is a half fallen it's in the world of galatia um where like some of the population are fallen like fallen angels who failed in the riot like a rebellion um so she's half fallen and kind of seen as less than and and her sister mariel um is accused of killing a virtue who's a member of the elite society uh of goetia and it's basically just the story of celeste trying to protect her sister from the trial and ine inevitable like death if mariel is found guilty of killing this virtue um yeah but it's really good okay I don't know what's going on with my camera, but the audio didn't work last time. So I'm going to talk about these. Fourth Wing. The world's gone crazy for this book, and rightfully so because it's a really well written book. I really, really liked this book. I really liked the characters. Uh, the book, if you're not aware, follows Violet Sorengal um, while she is kind of taking on the trials and tribulations of the Riders Quadrant at the Basgaith War College. The Basgaith War College has four quadrants, the Riders Quadrant, the Scri Scribe Quadrant, the Healing Healers Quadrant, and the Infantry Quadrant. The Riders Quadrant is definitely the most dangerous, but the Riders are the ones who ride the dragons in the war. It is really well written. The characters I love I love the dragons. Um, Violet and the male protagonist's kind of love story is fire. I love it so much. Um, and yeah, so I would 100% recommend this book. Um, I have not read Iron Flame yet. I do own it. I just haven't read it yet. Um, and I do know that some people have not enjoyed Iron Flame as much as they enjoyed Fourth Wing, that they felt like kind of let down. So I will let you know if that's the case. But as of now, I love this book. Would recommend it. It was definitely a five-star read. I was enthralled by it. Next book. You might be saying, Katie, we've seen this book before. It was in the previous video. Yes, it was. I reread this book. This was my reread. And I read it for my book club, and it is the best book in the world. So it's The Serpent and the Wings of Night by Carissa Broadbent. And if you're not familiar with this book, it is about, it follows Araya, who is the human the adopted human daughter of the nightborn king who's a vampire and she enters into the gajari which is a tournament to the death held by the goddess of death herself and whoever wins the gajari when gets awarded a wish granted by the goddess of death and it is kind of like a hunger games meets vampires meets just fabulosity <laughs> um and so it's just fabulous it's a wonderful book i would 1000 percent recommend this this book just got republished by bramble so this is the republished version of it it was self-published for a while by carissa broadbent um but she is a fa one of the best authors ever it is mo like the best written book i've ever read and it is 1000 percent one of my six star reads it was my 2023 favorite read the next book we're going to talk about is Assistant to the Villain. This is one of the best books I've read. The Serpent and the Wings of Night is like really, really well done, really well written. It's really like grabs you. Assistant to the Villain is just the most, ha like the happiest book in the world. It is. And, but it's about a villain. And I love a morally gray character. Love them. Favorite color is morally gray. Like, that's me to a T. I love morally gray characters. So, this was like, I was ready for this. But the story of it is that 
Evie Sage is, Sage has just been fired and she her employment is necessary because she's supporting her father and her sister. And so one of one day she runs into the notorious villain of the like town and country who's just known as the villain uh, which is really funny and he asks her to be his assistant and so she's the assistant to the villain and it's really cute and really adorable um and it's a very like grumpy sunshine because she, she's just like this bubbly happy sort of person but she's working in this world where like her boss kills people because he's the villain and I just love it I love it so much and the twist there's like twists where you're like this is so good this was definitely I think like a six star read I only give out six stars when I like I think it exceeds my expectations like a five star book is like this like is exactly what I expected this book to be it's a really good book I will read like it's great six is you exceeded my expectations and this exceeded my ex expectations by like oh, it's really good this is how does it feel by Jeanne O'Reilly I actually don't know how to pronounce her name I can't pronounce like any names it's really bad but how does it feel I saw this book on TikTok where I'm sure many people saw it um and because there was this one girl who gave one of the most hilarious but like authentic reviews where she like fell on the ground and I was like I need to know what's happening in this book and so I got this for Christmas and the author's note says to you my hope is not that you finish this book but this book finishes you and I was like mm. <laughs> so I was reading this I was like oh my god is it gonna like I'm waiting for it and the twist is good it's a good twist I really really liked it I think my expectations were way too high and they didn't like <gasps> reach it but it was so good I read it in like three days so like it's a good book so this book tells the story of Callie who um, is a human and she falls accidentally into uh, a portal to the fairy realm after she's trying to look for these like really rare mushrooms because she's an environmental justice person and a biologist and so she's looking for these rare mushrooms and she finds them but it turns out they are a portal to the fairy realm and she lands in the arms of the unseely prince um and the unseely are known for being vicious awful torturing fairies um and they loathe humans and so it's really just the but the crown prince feels this like draw this like he feels very drawn to her and he can't kill like he's he wants to kill her but he can't and so it's just the story of that and it's really good at the beginning you're like mm, where's the fairies because it does begin in like the modern human world and you're like mm, where are my fairies don't you worry once you get the fairies once you get the villain because the crown prince is the villain you it will not disappoint you so this is definitely really great i gave it a five star because it was really good it was just not a six star it was no assistant to the villain but it was really good this is The Roughest Draft by Emily Wimberly and I don't know that's right, that's right. And Austin Segmin Broca. This is one of the most unique romances I've literally ever read. So it alternates perspectives, which is really cool because you get I like it's writ it's co-written by spouses and it's about co-writers. Who are writing a romance book it's really really good um so it's about katrina freeling and nathan van hoysen who were the like brightest literary stars on the horizon and their co-written book was like topping the bestseller list but on the heels of their greatest success they ended their partnership on bad terms and nobody and then nobody knows what those terms were nobody knows what happened with them they haven't spoken since the big breakup 
and they never plan to except for the fact that they have one book left in their contract and so they're facing all of these crossroads in their professionals and personal lives and they are forced to reunite and write their last contracted book and it's really well written because it tells the pers it, so it tells the story from the past and the present so you're learning all these details about what might have happened and what could this big break this big thing be while falling in love and seeing like falling in love with the characters and seeing that they have this beautiful connection and friendship and it is just one of the best most original romances I've ever read so the roughest draft super good like 10 out of 10 would recommend this for the Allie Hazelwood books I'm gonna go through these love theoretically this is her most recent full book um she writes lots of like sciencey romances so the female character is always going to be some sort of science um lover um she's a the this is about elise hannaway who's a theoretical physicist so one of her like favorite clients who's like become one of her friends invites her to a family event and then she starts having feelings for the older brother of that client and it's really just like what divulges after that and it's so good um I love Allie Hazelwood her books read super super well like they super quick um and so this is a great book the fun thing so I read this and then I read Loathe to Love You, which is also by Allie Hazelwood. This is a collection of three novellas that she wrote before she wrote Love Theoretically. Um, and they tell the stories of three best friends. So there's Mara, Sadie, and Hannah. And they're scientists, and they're scientists in different areas. And so the three novellas are their love stories. So there's Under One Roof, which is an environmental enge engineer discovers that scientists should never cohabitate when she finds herself stuck with the roommate from hell, a detestable big oil lawyer who won't leave the thermostat alone. The second one is Stuck With You. A civil engineer and her nemesis take their rivalry and love to the next level when they get stuck in a New York elevator. That one's really good. Below Zero. A NASA aerospace engineer's frozen heart melts as she lies injured and stranded at a remote Arctic research station, and the only person willing to undertake the dangerous rescue mission is her longtime rival. Honestly, something that made me laugh, like they're really, it's a really, really good book, and it's a really good, they're like really great stories. Something that made me laugh was the fact that the first two, the stakes are really low. Like, it's like, oh, I have to live with this grumpy, like, person that I don't agree with and oh and like I'm stuck within an elevator but like it's not like I'm dying right below zero uh, she is actively in a life or death situation and so the stakes are very high um but Allie Allie Hazelwood it, it's really good so if you're if you love a romance and not necessarily like a fantasy romance the Allie Hazelwood Emily Henry and the roughest draft are the best the best books ever but our final book is on my kindle i read sarah damas's house of earth and blood the crescent city um for my book club so good so good i really love sarah damas like she really is like the goat when it comes to fantasy writing like she knows what we want and she gives us what we want and I'm so happy that she does that and that she's so good at it and that we're getting more um I am currently reading House of Sky and Breath which is the second installment of that series because the third installment is coming out at the end of January um, which is this month which is crazy um but yeah it's really good it tells the story of Bryce uh who is a half 
cafe living in the Crescent City or Lunathion. But yeah, thank you for watching this video. That is my 2023 reading wrap up. Um, I'm really excited to go into this new year and kind of I'm pushing myself. My goal for 2024 is to read 35 books. I'm trying. I small goals. Goals. I'm reading. I'm trying to read one more book than I did this year. If we surpass that goal, woohoo! If we meet that goal, yeah. If we don't meet the goal, still okay. But my goal is to read 35 books. Um, and I think I'll be able to do it because I have so many books that I want to read and there are so many books that are coming out that I'm super excited about. If you made it this far, comment a book emoji and your favorite book of this year. And if you read any of these books, let me know. Um, you can message me on it, social media. All of the my social media links will be in the description below. And have a happy new year. And here's to 2024. Bye guys.